welcome and welcome back to Cafe Ole. My name is Jay. Um, as always, Nefesh Ben Nefesh and I want to uh, thank you for joining us with to Cafe Ole, where we go over the everyday Hebrew you need in Israel to not only thrive, but survive as well. Um, and that's everything from reading and paying your bills, keeping up with the news, going grocery shopping, striking up a conversation, all the everyday things you do in your everyday life, in your native language, but here in Israel in modern Hebrew. As always, we want to hear from you what topics you'd like us to cover. Please be in touch with us. If you're joining us live on Zoom, you can write to us in the chat window of any questions, um, comments, concerns, requests for topics you may have. If you are not on Zoom and you're joining us um, recorded on YouTube or anywhere else online, write to us at hebrew at nbn.org.il. That's H-E-B-R-E-W at nbn.org.il. You can see all of our previous lessons up on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com, type in Cafe Ole. You'll see a whole playlist of all of our previous lessons up there. Um, that all being said, we're obviously uh, coming to you in very difficult times. Um, last week, um, we made the decision we need to keep going and maybe change the content of our classes to fit what's happening here in Israel, but to keep going with our lessons because you still need to, as I said, survive and thrive here in Israel as olim, as potential olim, as people are interested in learning modern Hebrew with us and how it's used in everyday life. Last week, we went over important words and resources you need here in Israel in this time, in this um wartime that we're in. Today, we're going to combine a previous lesson we've done to what's happening right now. Um, we've previously gone over what I would call emotional awareness, how we talk about how we're feeling, how we ask other people how they're feeling, and a range of emotions. Um, today, we're going to do a little bit of review on how to phrase those questions. And then we're going to go through some words that have to do with our own health, our emotional or our mental health that we were hearing a lot in everyday communication here in Israel, everyday conversations, um, news, and so forth. Um, we started a few minutes late because the air raid siren did go off just as we were signing on to get started today. So if it goes off again, whether it's here in the center of Tel Aviv or wherever you are in Israel, I promise you this class will be recorded. You'll be able to see it. Um, on demand on YouTube or by email if you joined us, if you signed up via Zoom. So if you need to step away, either because the air raid center is going off or the content is too much for you, you can always come back to this lesson recorded, okay? Don't worry about missing anything. Um, and what I am going to ask you as always um, is to keep the Q&A open for topics for questions related to this class only. And I'm actually going to prompt you already. We have 140 people on the call right now, which is wonderful, given the circumstances, because I know a lot of people don't want to be distracted um, right now, except what's on the news, if at all. Um, we're going to be talking about emotions and feelings, um, and I'm going to go through some that you hear a lot in the news and in everyday conversation nowadays. If there are specific emotions or feelings that you want to know how to say in Hebrew, I am feeling this or I am that, please write those in the Q&A so I can include them as I'm teaching to include that in. I've included a lot. We have a previous lesson, like I said, on emotional awareness you can see on YouTube. But if you're having any specific feelings, I promise I won't say your name aloud. I'm the only person who sees the Q&A, not anyone else. So I will only say what the word is in English and I'll help translate it for you in Hebrew. So if there are emotions or words to describe how you're feeling that I don't cover, or you want me to go over again, please write them in the Q&A as I'm teaching. Okay, so with that, let's get started. Um, let me just make sure that I have it open. Wrong tab. Just one second, folks. There we go. View full screen. Share. Okay. So as always, you are welcome to follow along. You're welcome to screenshot. If you are signed up via Zoom, you will get a copy of the spreadsheet. I apologize that last week's has yet to be uploaded to YouTube. But again, these are extraordinary times um, and things are going to take a little bit longer. 
but you can go and review it on YouTube in the video and just pause it and write down the words as well as you can write down the words as we go through this. Like I said, we're gonna go through a review that we did um, a mo several months ago about how we frame emotions and how we talk about them ourselves and others. And then we're gonna go into specific ones about what's happening now, as well as some practical things um, that are being done here to help out. Because I think that if we're, we're gonna talk about getting through this is not just putting words to how we're feeling and thinking, but also some actions that we can take care of and feel a little bit more in control of what's happening. Okay, so let's start at the beginning, feeling or feelings. Okay, and when we're talking about feeling or feelings, we're talking about emotional, or mental, we're not talking about physical here, okay? We, we can get to those words in a minute, but right now we're only talking about emotional, and the word for feeling in Hebrew is regesh, or regesh. And you're gonna see all these words in light blue from row two to nine all have the same root, resh gimel shin. We talk about this every class because it's that important. Every single Hebrew word is comprised of what we call a shoresh, or a shoresh, a root, R-O-O-T, made up of three letters. And those three letters um, will be plugged into what we call a mishkal for nouns and adjectives or a binyan for verbs to create words, milim. Okay, so in this case, we have the root resh gimel shin that we know has something to do with feelings. As you see, all the words we're gonna go through in these light blue have the same root and they're all connected as a result. They have a general meaning that's then fine tuned by what letters and vowels we include around this shoresh to make an actual word. So our first word, regesh, is a feeling. Regashot are feelings, the plural. Now this is a masculine word, even though the plural ends with ot, we're normally taught that words that end in ot are feminine. In this case, regashot is still masculine plural. We have a whole lesson on quote unquote exceptions to the rule and aesthetics of Hebrew that explain why it's regashot. Um, again, YouTube is your friend. You can see that lesson for free at your will. So regesh or regashot, feeling or feelings. If you wanna say a specific feeling, I have feelings of something. Rather than saying, I feel something, but let's say I am filled with feelings of, or I have feelings of something, you're using two nouns. In English, we call that a compound noun. In Hebrew, we call that smichut, where we put together two or more nouns to create a new concept. In this case, feelings of guilt, right? So, rigshot ashma. Okay, so if I want to say feelings of guilt, rigshot ashma. Okay, um, you could say all sorts of other things as well. You could say rigshot um, simcha, feelings of happiness, rigshot gaguim, feelings of longing. All sorts of different feelings that are a noun you could add after this word rigshot. And it's rigshot and not regashot, and we've talked about this before. When you create compound nouns in Hebrew, oftentimes the first word needs to change. Usually when it's either a feminine word or it's masculine plural. In this case, it goes from regashot to rigshot. Okay. So rigshot ashma, feelings of guilt. You could put anything there instead of guilt. Ashma is guilt. You could put other adjectives in there as well. Okay. Let's go to some other uses of this root. Rish gimelshin. Rigshi. Excuse me. Rigshi is emotional as an adjective. Ragish is sensitive as an adjective. We've talked about this, this family of adjectives that are A-E. Um, they usually mean able or ibel, but in this case, ragish means sensitive. Sensitive can, in this case, actually, ragish can be used in modern Hebrew to both mean um, emotionally sensitive, but also physically sensitive. Ani ragish um, and also biologically. So, for example, because this is uh, nefesh benefesh after all, ani ragish lemotzre chalav. I am sense literally. I am sensitive to dairy products, meaning either have an allergy to them or, like most um, humans in the world, and particularly Jews, I have. Um, I I'm lactose intolerant. One way to say I'm lactose intolerant, ani ragish. I'm sensitive to dairy products. Okay. 
And the noun, if ragish is the adjective, the noun sensitivity, ragishut. Again, both um, emotional and physical in this case. Okay, but this is very much the exception. These two, ragish and ragishut, usually this root has to do with something that is um, emotional or mental. For example, animit ragesh, male, or female, animit rageshet. I am excited, or I'm nervous in a good way. Okay, animit rageshe. I'm full of excitement, or I'm getting excited, or I'm nervous, but in a for something good. It could be I'm nervous because I'm about to be interviewed, or I'm nervous um, to I, I'm nervously excited is a better way to to think about this word, right? I'm nervously excited. I'm maybe moving around a bit. Um, maybe shaking, but it's for a good thing, right? I'm go going on a long trip or a vacation. I am um, something along those lines, a blind date, whatever it may be, animit ragesh, okay? Simply feel, again, in the physical, in the mental or emotional way, mental or emotional only, animal gish, male, animal gisha, female, okay? Animal gish, or animal gisha. Okay. Um, so I feel, and then you would, after this, I would, you put in an adjective, right? So um, I feel sad. Animal gish atsuv. That's how you would say it. You could also simply say ani atsuv. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, you can simply say, I am sad. Ani atsuv for male, female, ani atsuva. Or you can use this verb and say, ani malgish atsuv, I feel sad, or ani malgisha atsuva, female. Okay? And one of the most question, one of the most important lines you can ask, we can ask each other in this time is to a male, ech ata malgish, how do you feel? And to a female, ech at malgisha. Always important to ask whether or not it's reciprocated or not, it's good to ask um, how someone is feeling nowadays. Echat malgish, echata malgish, echat malgisha. How do you feel for male or for female? Okay, just a few more words with regards to that. Um, as I said before, lachush is um, to sense. It can also mean to feel, but it really does mean lachush to sense something um, physical. And from the same root as lachush, we also get trusha, a feeling or an intuition or also a sense, like our five senses. Right, we have five senses? Yeah. Chamesha um, trushot, right? Our five, the five senses. Trusha, um, a feeling or an intuition or a sense. There's also many other verbs that we can talk about, and we're not going to get to all of them today. We've talked about this in this previous lesson, and I'm going to let you look at that on your own, right? But here is ani choshesh, ani I fear, ani choshesh, male or ani chosheshet, female, and it's usually followed by the preposition me. And then finally, like I just said, if I wanted to say I I am sad, ani atsuv, we take the verb for it to be lihiot. Remember, in the present tense, there is no conjugation of the verb lehiot. We simply use the pronouns ani, ata, at, hu, he, and so forth, and then say how we're feeling. So if I want to say, I am sad, ani atsuv. Hu atsuv, he is sad, he atsuva, she is sad, okay, and so forth. You can also, again, as we just said, row eight, I feel sad versus I am sad. I feel sad, ani malgish atsuv. Same use of the adjective, we just add the verb for to feel rather than I am. Okay. Um, I want to stop here and open up specifically for what we're going through right now. Um, and again, if you have specific emotions or feelings you'd like me to cover in this, please write in the Q&A, not the chat. I think I accidentally opened the chat. As I say, I only look at the Q&A. I see some people who didn't listen to me. Please write in the q and I'm only looking at the Q&A for, um, for requests of specific emotions to go through. And I promise I will not say your name. It is entirely anonymous. 
Okay. We're going to go through some words about feelings and emotions that we go through at this time and period. Um, I'm going to start with something very practical. Um, then we're going to get to some um, specific words. First off is um, two very important phrases. If you haven't heard these in the last 10 days, they're really important. And we've talked in the last class about resources to help out if you are feeling, if you are in need of um, someone to talk with, if you're feeling distressed, um, and we can review those as well if you'd like. A very important um, phrase you'll hear a lot right now is ozen kashevet. Ozen is an ear. Kashevet comes from the verb lehakshiv, to pay attention to, right? And so ozen kashevet is an attentive ear, is a listening ear. Is um, If someone says that they have an ozen kashevet, it means that they can actively listen to you, right? They're inviting you to talk with them. Okay, and another way we can talk about that is a very classic line that you hear from a lot of support groups from helplines, whether it's online or by phone, um, simply says, yesh imi le dabil. Okay, just like in English, um, where we are taught as much as we don't use this all the time, as much as we're taught to not end sentences with the preposition, so too does modern Hebrew have that, right? So it's not how you would want to say it, it's the same construct as in English. Yesh, there is, im mi, with whom, right? It's the equivalent of with whom. Im is with, mi means who, but in this case it's whom, if we want to be real fancy. There is with whom, lidabil, to speak, okay? There's someone to talk to, there's someone to speak to in everyday language, because everyday language, hopefully we don't really care about the preposition coming at the end. But in proper English, proper Hebrew, yesh im mi l'dabel, there's someone with whom to speak, okay? And you will see a lot of um, support. There's a lot of support for civilians. You don't have to live in the South. You don't have to, God forbid, have been wounded or have loved ones missing or murdered or kidnapped to reach out for support. All of us are in need of support in some capacity these last 10 days and will continue to do so. Um, when you see that or you say that to someone, it means that either if you say it, it means you're usually open to hearing someone um, who needs to talk. But if there's a support line that says, it means that they're willing to listen to you. There are also a lot in English and other languages. We can go through those supports again if you need um, at the end of this. Okay, let's talk about some of the words we're using a lot to describe what's happening now and how we feel. Okay, some of these are going to be larger descriptions, but they also reference how we are reacting to news and how we're taking in our unfortunate reality. Okay, some of the words you're going to hear a lot on the news and everyday conversations are things like ason. Ason is a catastrophe. Um, simply put, ason. Um, another word that you'll hear quite a lot is zva'a. Zva'a means atrocity. Um, they're very similar words in terms of meaning, but they, just like in English, we have two separate words, so too in Hebrew. Uh, tevach is slaughter. Um, that's, yeah. Pogrom is pogrom. It's the same, it's the same word in Hebrew as it is in Russian as it is in English. And milchama, war. Um, I remember teaching, um, when we first started Café Ole, now almost six years ago in the back uh, conference room here in Tel Aviv. And I remember one of the participants getting very angry that we were going over words that were slang or were negative in meaning. And I stopped the class and let him talk. And then I said, but that's language. Whether you use the words or not, that is language and that is life. It's not all going to be pretty words. And we didn't all move to Israel um, and it only going to be positive. Unfortunately, that's not life. There's still a lot of things we have to deal with, even making Aliyah. Um, and if these words are troublesome for you, they're troublesome for me too. I'm not teaching them to make you feel troubled. I'm teaching them because these are the words that everyone is thinking, if not using right now. And better that you feel equipped to join in conversations or at least understand what's going on even if you don't use these words, even if they hurt hearing, that unfortunately is what we're facing right now 
um, better to know the words because you're probably also hearing them and if not using them in English. But here in Israel, this is what we use as our language of communication, modern Hebrew. Some of the words that have to do with how we feel. Um, and these are very important words that you're hearing a lot. And we've talked about these words in the context of Memorial Day, Yom Hazikaron. Unfortunately, we're going to be using these words um, for quite some time now. Ovdan or avdan, but usually it's ovdan, loss. Okay, this root alef bet dalid comes up a lot when we talk about to lose, either to be lost physically or emotionally, but also to lose something. Right, we've talked about this word before. So avduli amaftechot, my keys are missing, or halachti laibud, I got lost. Okay, or ibadeti keshel im, I lost contact with someone. Okay, but ovdan is the noun loss. Okay, this can be lost for a thing, but also of someone. Shchol. Shchol is grief. Um, we talk about this in the context a lot about the mishpachot uh, shekulot, the grieving families. But in, in shakul, there is an adjective, grieving. Grief as a noun is shchol. Okay. Um, two words that are very connected, and you're going to see this a lot in a lot of the words we're going to go through now. The, how you say it as an adjective and how you say it as a noun, right? Because that's very important how we communicate. Sometimes we feel better saying how I feel, or like we talked about, rigshot ashma, feelings of something, versus I feel something. Two different ways to communicate how we're thinking and feeling. So, for example, chosel onim. Row 13 is the noun. Let me write that here, actually, so you see that. All right? Chosel onim is helplessness. Okay? Versus chasar onim is helpless. Chosel onim doesn't uh, conjugate because it's a noun. Um I have helplessness, meaning like I am filled with it. You'll hear it on the news. Someone talking, they'll say, I am, I, I, ha, I am either filled with it, or they'll use the noun like this, helplessness, or they'll use the adjective. For male, female, um, helpless. Okay, so helplessness, noun, helplessness. Chasar onim, adjective. Chasar onim, chasrat onim are both the adjectives. Chasar onim, male. Chasrat onim, female. Okay, helpless, adjective, helplessness, noun. Some other things. Either enli milim or ani lelo milim. You saw this a lot in the first few days. You still have people 10 plus days onward saying this completely natural, completely human, I have no words. Enli milim, literally, I have no words. Ani lelo milim, lelo, we've talked about a lot here in row 16. Lelo is a synonym of bli, without, non. Okay, so both of these translate to I have no words. Enli milim or ani lelo milim. These are used regardless of gender, which is why gender is not written there. Okay, some specific adjectives, some specific emotions. Etsev. Etsev is sadness. It's a noun. And the adjective is atsuv. Etsev being the noun does not conjugate, but atsuv being an adjective does. So atsuv, atsuva, atsuvim, atsuvot. Sad. Za'am. Za'am is rage. Okay, as a noun. Enraged as an adjective is zoem. Zoem, zoemet, zoamim, zoamot. Kaas, anger as a noun, and angry as an adjective, koes. Koes, koeset, koasim, koasot. Okay? Um, there's many more, like I said, that emotional awareness um, class. We did a lot. I'm looking forward to seeing what ones you're asking in the Q&A. Um, I'm going to go through these last few words um, before I'm actually going to break 
I'll actually break right here and see what words you have that you've written out. Shattered and numb, wonderful. We're gonna do shattered in just a second. Um, uh, stressed, let me write that here. Where am I? Stressed. Uncertainty. Um, I feel dead inside. Gloomy. Depressed. Distracted. It's a great one. Overwhelmed. Numb, disconnected, or distant. Disconnected, distant, anxious. Shaking, shivering, emotionally, scared. Anxious, we have despair, surreal, helpless, we just did, sorry, frightened, scared, in shock, in shock, uncertain, do we already have? Uncertainty, yeah, we had uncertainty. Frustrated, good. Vulnerable. Vulnerable, great. This is, a, this is a really good list. I see that people asked other questions. I'm gonna get to your other questions. I just, I really wanted to break at this point to go over some of the, the feelings you wanted translated, but I am gonna answer your questions. Don't worry about that. Um, so feel free to answer, ask any other questions along the way. I saw that there were questions even about things I've already gone over, but I'll happily go over those again. Okay, um, a few up here that I wanna do before we get to um, the ones that you came up with. So first off, um, this is one that you hear a lot, Zelonit Pas. Zelonit Pas basically translates to it can't be, it cannot be, right? Nit Pas means caught. Um, literally means caught. But when you say zelonit pas, it can't be. It just can't be. And related to that, also using the word nit pas is bilti nit pas, inconceivable, unbelievable. But unbelievable in the sense of inconceivable. I just can't believe it. It can't be. Zelonit pas is simply an expression. Bilti nit pas is an adjective. You can say ze bilti nit pas. This or it, excuse me, is inconceivable, but it is an adjective. Um, this, by the way, gets conjugated bilti nit pas, bilti nit peset, bilti nit pasim, bilti nit pasot. It's the second word that gets um, conjugated. Um, we had a couple that were people asking about broken or shattered. Um, shavul, shavul coming from the verb to break or to be broken is both physical but also emotional, shavul is broken. Um, and heartbreaking, korea lev. You can say shover lev, but when you hear the term heartbroke, heartbreaking in he modern Hebrew, we actually use the verb likoa, to tear. 
So it's heart tearing or heartbreaking, as we would rather say often in English, tearing the heart apart. We could also think of right. Korea live the erua Korea live. It is a heartbreaking event. That's how we use it. In this case, Korea is a participle. We talked about this before in terms of nouns and verbs and participles. I'm not going to get into that again in this class, but just know this is both a an expression. A compound noun and it's a participle followed by a noun. So it's a lot of things at once. But you'll hear the Pashut Korea Korea Lev or Korea etalev. In proper Hebrew, you would say Korea etalev. It tears the heart apart. But you'll also hear people simply say heartbreaking, Korea Lev. Broken. We'll also make that shattered. Okay, let's get to some of the ones that you asked for. Stressed. Okay, stressed is la chutz. La, la chutz. Stress is lachatz or pressure. Um, la chutz, I'm stressed, I'm pressured, but it also means stressed. Uncertainty. E. I va da ut. I va da ut. Okay. E is like when we say e if shall, impossible. Um, e can also mean un in this case. Va da ut is certainty. Anime va de, I am certain or I am checking or I am validating something. Right. So i va dut or chose va dut, uncertainty. But i va dut is usually what you'll hear. Um, I feel dead inside. Ani malgish met mi bifnim. Ani malgish. This is masculine. Ani malgish met mi bifnim. Okay, I put the mem in parentheses because you'll hear both ani malgish met bifnim or ani malgish met mi bifnim. I feel dead inside or I feel dead from the inside, just like we would say in English, where me is from. But either one is okay. If for female, animal gisha meta me bifnim. Okay, so the verb and the adjective will conjugate. Gloomy, um I'm trying to think the best way to say gloomy. Gloomy. Um that's not a word we normally have. Um but let me let me just double check what I'm thinking of for gloomy, gloomy. Agum atsuv afel afuri akul kodel. Agum is probably the best one. Let's say agum. Um, you'll hear atsuv more, um, like we talked about with sad. But gloomy is is fine there. Um, Depressed, um, the the verb for depressed, there's depressing and depressed. And oftentimes in Hebrew, they get mixed up. So you can either say midake or meduka. Midake is depressing, meduka is depressed. Um, but these are both used interchangeably in modern Hebrew. You will hear both of these used, even though they are different parts of speech. One is... Um, active one is passive, but you will hear both of these. Me, me, da, ke, me, du, ka. Um, distracted. Hmm. Distracted. So we talked about um, Ozen Kashevet. Um, this is a good one because I'm sure a lot of you are feeling distracted with so much going on and trying to stay in touch with everything. Um, we say mutrant asuk mevulbal musach musach. I like. Um, so we have the the verb lehasiach, which is to distract. Um, and so the past participle, the passive participle, would be musach, distracted, because lehasiach is to distract someone or something. Distracted is musach, but we have other ways to say this. We can say. Um, Mutrad, 
um, is another way to say distracted. I'm bothered. It's more like I'm bothered rather than distracted. Um, Libalbel is to confuse. Um, so mevulbal is in the sense of being distract, confused um, as much as being distracted. So let me write some of these for you. Musach, mutrad, me ul bal. Okay. Um, very important words to 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 include in how you are feeling. Over overwhelmed. Another one. Very important. Um, that's what I thought. Uh, hamum. Hamum is distracted, overwhelmed, excuse me. Ah, uh, mum. Right? Disconnected. Minutak. Sorry. Minutak. Minutak. Distant. Um, you could say rachok, which is far away, or miluchak, distant. Rachok. I feel far away from what's happening or distant in the other sense. So, or Anxious. We've talked about this word before. We have a lot of different ways to say this. Um, anxious in the sense of tense. You could say matuach, or you can say um, atzbani or atzavim, meaning I have I have nerves. Um, but I want to see if there's a more um, updated, more clinical word that's used for anxious before I give you these. Um, atzbani, we have matuach. Um, Lachutz, we talked about um, that's more bit trembling. Um, mudag, mudag in the sense of worrying. We've had this word before when we talked about um, emotional spectrum. So, ma tuach atzbani and mudag, which means more worried, but also important shaking or shivering. Um, if um if something is uh, shiver inducing, it's mitzamrel. Me. And the other word is charid, um, the same word that you know uh, from um charidim, right? The term that's used by um that's otherwise translated into English as ultra orthodox. Um charid means to to tremble. Right, because the idea is that someone who's charedi is trembling before God, um, but chared is very much um, shaking. Charada is shock, and you're hearing a lot of people who, after a um, whether it's a, a missile attack or throughout all this, are suffering from charada, from shock, which is no less a medical issue than any of the other things we've heard about in the last ten days. Um, so very much is the word to use here as well. So me, me, sam, rel, and ha, red. Okay. Um, scared, me, fached. I am scared, ani me, fached. I am scared, female, ani me, fachedet. Okay. Me, me, fached. Um, despair. Um, yeush, eh, despair is yeush. Um, despair, just double check. Yeah, we've done helplessness, which is also this, choseronim, but yeush is the best word here for despair. Um, yeush. Surreal is, um, uh, very easy, it's surreali. Um, surreali. It's just the English turned into Hebrew. Surreali. Okay. 
Um, so just one second, keeping my messages open. Um, I'm Chuck um, Behelem. Be, be, he, lem. Frustrated, me to skull. What? Me to skull. Me to skull. Vulnerable. Pagia. Pagia. Um, this is a really great list, uh, and I say great, and I do mean great in the sense of I'm glad you're able to articulate how you're feeling, and I'm glad I'm able to answer those and give you some words to put together with them, and also the context of how to use them, simply by saying ani, followed by one of these, or ani malgish or malgisha. Okay. I want to go through some of the other words on this list and then get to your questions because I see a lot of people have written in and thank you so much. If I don't get to it in this hour, um, I promise I'm going to write down all the words and copy them out so that when you get the spreadsheet, they'll be there included. Okay, So don't worry if I didn't get to your words. I promise they'll be included in the list when this is sent out as a PDF. Okay, I want to get to some talked about feelings, naming feelings, which is no less important in terms of getting through what we're going through and also some of the words you're hearing in terms of our response as citizens, not as government, not as military, you and I as civilians, okay? So one of the words you're hearing a lot right now is chosen. Chosen is resilience. It's from the same word that we've had for chasinut, immunity. We talked all those years ago about corona and we talked about uh, the pandemic. We talked about this word as well in a different context. Chosen means resilience. We talk a lot about the resilience of Israelis and the Israeli people and the Jewish people in this time, how much we can have. Um, two of the verbs we're hearing a lot right now are very much related. And in English, we would translate them both as enlisted. Again, we're talking about how do we transform how we're feeling what we're going through right now into something we can tangibly do to help out. Um, and two verbs you're hearing a lot right now are guyas and nirtam. Both of these are passive. And as we've talked about before in the past, um, pa passive. Um, Hebrew loves passive. Um, passive, passive voice in Hebrew is considered a much higher level of Hebrew as opposed to English, where we've been, we've been taught for many years that you should not write in a passive voice, whereas in Hebrew, it's considered better Hebrew um, when it's in passive. So you have two verbs here, um, right, that mean um, enlisted. Sorry, just one second. I want to be sure that that is off it is okay um okay so guyas and we're going to get back to this verb again in a second guyas means enlisted in a military sense okay the word that you're hearing on the civilian level however is nirtam nirtam means enlisted in a non-military sense either people or goods are being enlisted to help right being called up to help nirtam okay um, you've probably heard this word a lot in the last 10 days. And if you're, if you haven't, you need to know this word. This probably one of the most important words on this list. Um, if you haven't heard this already is the word Hamal. Hamal is an abbreviation, as you see here, as I wrote it out. Um, when you see two apostrophes between the second to last and last letters of any word in Hebrew, it means that it is an abbreviation or an acronym for something. In this case, Chamal stands for Chadal Mivtsaim, Operations Room. Cheder is a room. Mivtsa, mivtsa, we've talked about before. Mivtsa is both a sale, like in a store, but it's also a military operation. Okay, so chadal mivtsaim, a compound noun, smichut, for operations room, or chadal milchama, a war room. This is an army word that we use in everyday life to mean like a situation room. An operations, a war room, but think of it as a situation room. It's a place where logistics are being handled, where supply and demand are being put together, the resources that are needed. Um, since the very first day uh, on October 7th, um, there have been chamalim, which is the plural, that have been set up throughout the country by citizens 
not by the government, by citizens, to coordinate relief efforts. Um, at this point in Israel, every town, if not every neighborhood in a town, has a chamal, where they are assessing what needs there are, either in their own city or from their own population as citizens or as soldiers being um, drafted, and then supplies that are needed, whether it's for civilians or soldiers, collecting them in a specific place and then donating them out. There is even a whole website that puts together the entirety, all the chamalim that are known throughout Israel that are right hap tap taking place right now. Every municipality has one. Every neighborhood has one. Every here in Tel Aviv, for example, Dizengov Center, the the major mall in the center of the city, has its own chamal. But so does the neighborhood of Nevet Sedek farther down, and so does Midtown which is not Midtown, it's actually North Tel Aviv. Um, everywhere has a chamal, and the chamal can focus on specific topics, or it can be an altogether um, one-stop shop for people who are looking to both donate, to volunteer, to help out in any relief um, capacity they can. At a chamal, you'll see very specific things that are taking place. And, and like I said, I want to I want to move us Still want to talk about emotions, still want to talk about feelings and keep that space. And I see other people are writing in with the Q&A, but I also always like to give something practical when we're teaching in general and especially in times like these. So if you haven't already gone to your local chamal um, or you have, here are some of the words you're going to hear at those. So first off, trumot. Trumot are donations or trumot. They can be both financial and non-financial, money or actual goods that are needed. A trumot are donations, truma, one donation, or a donation. Isuf is collection, right? It comes from the same verb as le'esof, to add or to collect or to bring together. Isuf is collection. Chaluka is distribution. Shinua is transport of goods, not of people. We use this with regards to transporting um, donations or distributing donations, right? Shinua, how does it get from the Hamal, let's say here at Dizengov Center, to an army base in the north or to a needy family in the south, okay? Shinua. Aspaka is supply. We've talked about Aspaka a lot, not just in terms of donated goods, but remember the, a few days ago when um, people went a little hysterical in the grocery stores and bought up all the bottled water they could find because there was a miscommunicated directive from the home front command about being supplied with three days worth of water. And then the question is, is there an adequate supply of goods and water in the stores? That word supply, aspaka. Okay. And finally, for these words, before I get to your questions, I'm going to break right now for them. Gius ksafim. This is a big one that you're hearing now, not just in terms of donations, but specifically, literally enlisting money or recruiting money or drafting money. Legayes means to recruit or to enlist or to draft. Ksafim, monies. Gius ksafim, fundraising. Okay, this is a specifically um, raising money, you could say it, or enlisting money. Um, you could say gius trumot, right? Um raising donations or enlisting donations. But when you say gius ksafim, it is fundraising through and through. Okay, I see we have a lot of questions in Q&A. I promise I'm gonna get to all as much as I can. I'm actually, as we're talking, I'm gonna try to make sure that I keep all of them here. So if I can't get to them in the time we have left, um, I'm able to get to them before we send out the spreadsheet. Just one second to make sure that this copied for myself. Yes, I got all of yours. Wonderful. Okay. Um, someone said I did not get the last spreadsheet. Like I said, things have happened since last week. Um, and I acknowledge that it hasn't been sent out. We are gonna try to upload that in the next day or so. Thank you for your patience. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Someone asking, 
Um, I'm sure you're aware that Nefesh Benefesh started lectures um, at the same time as my class. My class has been going on for six years, folks, wartime and peacetime, that there are other events going on. Thank God we have other things that we're able to program at the same time. That is your choice whether to join or not. Nothing more to say about that. Um, please explain when the mem is used at the beginning of a word as in Malgish. Great question. Um, let me open up. word again. Um, one of the most um, commonly used letters um, when we are in Hebrew, right? One of the most commonly used words in uh, letters in Hebrew to start a word is the letter mem. Okay, ani malgish is malgish because it is part of the conjugation we call hif'il. Um, and we've talked about this before. Um, I talked a lot about the shoresh, right? In this case, the shoresh of resh gimel shin is then applied into what we call the binyan. Binyan is the format that we use to create verbs. In this case, this verb is part of the binyan called hif'il. And in present tense, hif'il turns into maf'il. So applying the shoresh into that form, we get malgish. Okay? Just like if I were to apply it into the construct, the binyan hitpa'el, I would get mitragesh, okay? Mem here doesn't mean anything on its own. It's part of the binyan. It's part of the construct that we use to get the verb here, but it doesn't mean anything on its own, okay? But great question, because you are gonna see that a lot and it's good to recognize patterns. Um, how do you say five senses again? Chamesh trushot, okay? Um, we had trusha here, feeling, right? And because it is feeling is feminine. Um, and remember, numbers are a little tricky in Hebrew. Um, it's not what you would think it would be. It's chamesh trushot. Remember, when we count, we're actually counting in feminine. Chad shtayim shalosh alba chamesh are all feminine um, numbers. Masculine numbers are echad shnaim shlosha alba'a chamisha shisha and so forth. Okay, it's the opposite of what you would naturally think. Um, how come you say ani malgisha tsuva, but then you say ani malgisha tov? Great question. Great, great question. So we've talked about this before. Hebrew is a really, really logical language. Okay, it, it is, it's seventh and eighth grade algebra, I say all the time. Almost all words are predictable, both in how you can construct them and how you can deconstruct them to figure out what they mean, with the exception of one part of speech. There's one part of speech in modern Hebrew that is not predictable, that is as irregular as English is. And trust me, English is a very difficult language to learn as a second language for people. Think about describing and spelling, how to describe how to spell things in English, let alone all the um, irregularities. There's one part of speech in Hebrew that is not nearly as uniform as everything else, and that is adverbs, right? What is an adverb? It describes an action. It describes a verb, as opposed to an adjective, which describes a noun. So, animal gisha tov is correct because tov means both good and well. Good is an adjective. Well is an adverb. It's a tricky one. Um, there are There are... Adject adverbs in Hebrew are very difficult. And unfortunately, that's something you just have to learn one by one. There is no magical formula like for everything, for verbs and adjectives and nouns and all these other things that have very specific forms. We've talked about those forms before called mishkalim. We have a whole class on YouTube about that. Adverbs are the exception. So tov is both good, masculine, adjective, and it's an adverb, all gender inclusive. Well, so animal gishatov, I feel well. We say in English incorrectly, I feel good. Um, many of us, James Brown included, but it's supposed to be I feel well. In Hebrew, good and well are the same words to make it even more complicated for us. Um, explain metach with a taf. Let me write this here. 
um, sure that we have it actually in our lesson to be given later. We've talked about this before, um, but always happy to go through this. Metach. Metach is tension. Okay, metach is tension. Um, metach is tension. Um, as in a noun, matuach is tense, both yourself or situation. Hamatzav meod matuach. The situation is very tense. Okay, but there's another word that you again. We talked a lot about this in the past. Spelling is destiny in Hebrew. You cannot misspell in Hebrew, even if the letters sound sim similar. And this is a great example. Metach is tension, right? But you've probably heard this word a lot. Matach is not. First off, it's matach, and this is a barrage, as in matach tilim, a barrage of rockets. You'll see this word used a lot on the news. If you're just learning Hebrew and you see this word and this word, you aren't necessarily going to know how to pronounce either of them, okay? Um, that's one of the things you learn in the course of learning Hebrew and individual words. But metach is tension and matach is barrage. Me, me, tach, ma, tach. Oh, it did not work. Me, tach. Ma tach. And this is ma tu ach. Tu ach. Okay. Um, how do you ask, are you safe? How do you say, I have to go, the sirens are off? Okay, so first off, you don't need to say, I have to go, the sirens are off in Hebrew. If the sirens go off, you just go. And you're in Israel, if you need, to, you don't need to say that in Hebrew because everyone knows what that is in Hebrew in Israel, right? Are you safe? Great question to ask. Are you safe? You can ask this either, are you safe? Or as we're talking about today, do you feel safe? Okay. In which case you're going to use the verb mogish, right? But safe, let's actually do it that way. Safe or secure or certain, it can also mean is batuach. Batuach, betucha, betuchim, betuchot. Ba, tu, ach. Okay, M. Adjective. Okay, batuach. So you could say, are you safe? Ata batuach. You could say, do you feel safe? Ata malgish batuach. Okay, so either you have. Okay. Um, but I have to go, the sirens are going off. If you're speaking to someone abroad in Hebrew, kol um, that's great. But if the sirens go off, you just go, regardless if you wherever you are in the country. Um, someone asks, I thought shchita meant slaughter. Um, slaughter is shchita, as in like slaughter of an animal. Tevach is slaughter, as in slaughter of human beings. We don't use the verb shchita when it comes to slaughter of um, people. Um, I have no words. Can it be positive? Yes. Enli um, milim in better times does mean I have no words in a positive way. Like, wow. Wow. Pashut eli milim. Ezo matana. What an amazing. What Ezo matana matima. What an amazing gift. Yes. In positive times, I have no words means I have no words in a positive sense. But it can also mean enli milim. I have no words. Okay. Chasratonim is the feminine for helpless adjective. Chasaronim, masculine. I feel helpless. Ani malgish chasaronim. He malgisha chasratonim. Or he chasratonim. She is helpless. Okay. Um, someone wanted to know. 
Um, someone wants to know the word for rape, which I'll put here is onus. 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 Do pronouns conjugate the same way as pronouns? Would you say he is sad the same way as David is sad? Yes. Exactly the same way. Who atsuv? David atsuv. Same thing, right? The pronoun is just taking the place of a proper noun. Same exact thing. Okay. Um, num, I'll put on here and I'll get back to you. Disassociated, I'll put back here and get back to you. Dis, uh, associated. Volunteer, can't believe I forgot that word. Let me put that up here. Volunteer, a very important word nowadays. Meet na dev. Okay, a volunteer is a meet na dev. Volun volunteer. Volunteer. Meet na dev. And of course, I didn't do it. Second. Meet na dev. Meet nadev, meet nadevet, meet nadvim, meet nadvot. Very important word. We all need to be finding some way to be a meet nadev volunteer nowadays. Okay. Um, would you say lev shavuot for broke, heartbroken? You can say, you would say it the other way around. Shavuot lev or halev sheli shavuot. My heart is broken or I am of broken heart. You can also say korea lev, as we said before, like your heart is torn apart. Despair, we did. Sorry, just got there. Surreal, unreal, helpless. Um, trouble sleeping nightmares. I'm going to add this to the list and come back to you on this. Trouble sleeping nightmares. Um, shock, we had. Unsure, uncertain, we did. Frustrated, vulnerable, numb, frustrated. Are you stressed out? Are you stressed? out impending doom hopeful um impatient great one to have my heart is breaking um can you re please review the feminine of all these adjectives um I can do some of them because, as you see, we have a lot of these, but let's just do a few of these. Um, musach, musachet, musachim, musachot. Mutrad, mutredet, mutradim, mutradot. Mevulbal, mevulbelet, mevulbalim, mevulbalot. Hamum, hamuma, hamumim, hamumot. Menutak, menuteket, menutakim, menutakot. Rechok, rechoka, rechokim, rechokot. Merurchak, merurcheket, merurchakim, merurchakot. Matuach, metucha, metuchim, metuchot. Atzbani, atzbanit, atzbanim, atzbaniot. Mudag, mudeget, mudagim, mudagot. Metzamrer, metzamreret, metzarerim, metzarerot. Chared, chareda, charedim, charedot. Mefached, mefachedet, mefachadim, mefachadot. Um, agum, aguma, agumim, agumot. Medake, um, medaket, med, medakim, medakot. Meduka, medukat, medukaim, medukaot. Um, if that was too fast, you'll get the recording of this um, as well. I apologize for that. Um, Relieved. How to say PTSD? Um, PTSD, we simply say post trauma, but we, that's definitely a word to know. Um, we have hopeless and hopeful, miserable. Um, there's a great question here. How much do Israelis talk about feelings in general in the situations like today, especially males? Um, if you're watching the news, like I have 
for the last 10 days, nonstop, everyone is talking about their feelings. Generals, civilians, old, young, new, old, doesn't matter. Everyone is talking about how they're feeling. Um, and especially what we've witnessed, unprecedented. Um, people are talking about their feelings. Uh, can you let us know the website that is that lists all the Hamas? Yes. Um, first off, what is the difference between Chadal and Chedel? Great question. It's the same word. Because Chadal Miftsaim is a smichut, and we said that just now, that sometimes when you are making a um, compound word that the first word in it needs to change its vowels, here's a great example. When Chedel, room, is at the beginning of a compound word, it changes to Chadal. So for example, Chadal Ochel is a dining room. Chedel plus Ochel becomes Chadal Ochel, dining room. Chedel plus Mivtsaim becomes Chadal Mivtsaim or simply Chamal. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, someone asked, what's the Lamed in Hamal? Hamal is Chadal Mil Chama. So if you want to <clears throat> literally translate it as what each letter stands for, Chadal Mil Chama. So it's the Chet in Chedel or Chadal. Mil Chama, the first two letters of the second word, Chamal. Um, I'm just going to share with you this one last thing, and then we're going to break um, as we are over time already. This is the master list as of now of all the different Hamalim in the country. Let me share it with you. It's H A M A L I M dot O R G. Okay, there are a bunch of other websites, but this is the major one. Um, Achamalim. Kol Achamalim apeilim bamakom echat. All the Hamalim, all the situation or war rooms, active war rooms in one place. And so you go down here and you can click on all the different ones that are here. If you can't read Hebrew, that's fine. You can use Google Translate to get yourself around here, but it will tell you and you can pick what topic you want. So for example, um, Shinua Tziud, right? We talked about the word Shinua, transport. Tziud is equipment. So if you need help either in getting equipment uh, transported to you or you want to help with that, you would click here. If you are Hasa'ot, Hasa'ot has to deal with transporting people. So if either you are in need of transporting people or you would like to help, that's what you would click. Hasbara ben Lumit, if you want to help with the efforts in explaining what's happening here in Israel to the larger world, you would click here. Bakashat Siud, a request for equipment. You would click here, and so forth and so forth. Here is Auchot Lachayalim, meals for soldiers, either making or delivering. You would click here. And once you click on one of these, let's say Auchot Lachayalim, it will filter it out and will give you all the different places that do that here. Now, almost every Hamal has that option. Here in Tel Aviv, restaurants are also drafted to... Um, are, are making meals themselves. This is just a really nice big list, but I promise you wherever you are in the country, there is a Hamal. If you don't know, go to your synagogue, go to the local Beit Chabad, go to your municipality, go to your no nearest um, community center. They will have their own Hamal in giving some of the relief effort that's needed. Okay, with that, we are well over our time. Thank you all for joining. Um, if I didn't get to your specific words or questions that you have, you can always write us at hebrew at nbn.org.il. Um, as always, thank you all for joining. I hope to see you all here next week, no matter the situation. I hope this was helpful. We hope to get this to you uploaded as well as with the words so you can help better communicate how you're feeling and getting through these days um, shortly. So with that, and see you all very soon.